All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, I often get asked if I have any hints and the tips, advice on how to make a street trials bike run smoother or be easier to set up. So today I'm gonna to run through five things you can do to your bike that will ease setup and make it run a little bit smoother. And I think this is probably the shortest intro I have ever done in my life. Let's jump in. Tip number one, quick release headset spacers. Street trials riders tend to run a lot of headset spacers to get a nice high front end to match a higher than normal bottom bracket height and make the bike bunny hop easily. But we also run our front brake hose through the steerer tube to stop it from getting caught. This makes it hard to fit or remove spacers to fine tune bar height. Normally you'd have to disconnect the brake and slide everything off which can risk losing some brake fluid. But with one simple change, we can fit them without having to touch the brake. You could even perform a little bit of magic. Hwa. All right, time to get kicked out of the magic circle and share the secret. It's as simple as snipping the spacer to allow it to flex open and around the brake hose. These are small carbon spacers and are easy to cut, but it's also possible with thin alloy ones too. These small ones now easily snap over the cable, but what about bigger spacers? Bigger spacers won't flex open as easily, so instead a slot big enough for the hose to pass through is needed. This works for alloy or carbon, just watch out for the dust. Now you can add or remove spacers quickly and easily, ideal when you have a new bar, stem or even bike and you want to try different bar heights. Hack number two, shroud nut retainer. There's nothing more annoying than having the shroud nut slide down the hose and into the fork when working on the front brake. Getting this little guy back up into the lever is a nightmare. It never wants to stay in place and tipping the bike upside down will result in lost fluid. Fortunately, this hack couldn't be simpler. Simply get a short strip of tape and wrap a couple of layers around the hose next to the shroud nut. This will keep it from sliding down the hose and make fitting a new brake easier as well as any future maintenance. Just make sure you leave a little gap so the nut is free to spin and don't add too much tape as it still needs to fit through the top gap. Now you can push the hose up the steel tube and the shroud nut will stay where you want it. Tip, don't forget your top cap. I'm embarrassed to say that there have been plenty of times where I've refitted everything and completely forgot my top cap. So yeah, don't forget it. One of the simplest hacks, but one of my faves. Now for hack number three, zip tie brake bleed. Okay, let's say you've been clumsy and lost some fluid, or perhaps you fitted a new empty lever. Most people would do a full re-bleed. This takes time, needs specialist tools, and risks getting fluid on the caliper and pads. I'm not even gonna use a syringe. It's possible to fill the brake with just a zip tie, but you could use just about anything long and thin. Great, right, behave down there in the comments. I've used this technique with great success on both Shimano and Magura levers. I'm sure it can work on other systems, but I can't guarantee it. I also use this technique to fill these levers when they are new and completely empty. First remove the levers bleed port. Add your brake fluid to a smaller container, and then we use a zip tie to pick up a drop. And then it's just a case of putting the drop into the lever. Capillary action will usually suck it from the zip tie into the lever. Giving the lever a squeeze will help. It will take a little bit of time, but it's a surprisingly quick way to fill the lever. To make sure you've got all the air out, rotate the lever and give it a few squeezes. And top up if needed. Once full and the lever feels firm, then you're done. Refit the bleed port bolt and give it a wipe down. The lever should now be full and back to normal. Note that this isn't a substitute for a full brake bleed. If you've had air enter at the caliper, then this technique won't be as effective as a bleed with the correct tools. But as a top up for a lever spill, it works great. Number four, the knuckle bumper. One of the more painful issues you might have happened is hitting your middle finger knuckle on the brake lever. It mainly happens on the back brake side during a big move when you're squeezing hard, but your hand is also rotating around the bars. To save weight, levers usually have a pocket on the back, but this makes them sharper and more likely to cut you. I used to always have an open cut, but since doing this hack, I haven't hurt my finger at all. All that's left is a tiny scar. 
There's probably a few products that'll work, but I've had great results with Sugru. It's a moldable rubber glue that you can shape how you want and it'll set into a firm rubber. Just squash it into a ball and press onto a clean lever blade. It's up to you how neat you make it, as long as the rubber hits your finger before the lever blade. After 24 hours, it'll set into a perfect knuckle bumper. And if you wanted, you can even curl a match with your bike. No more pain. Ideal. And finally, hack number five, brake pad silencer. Okay, so my brakes aren't the worst at this, so it's hard to get an example. But sometimes disc brake pads can slide in the caliper and make a really loud noise that sounds like something snapping. It's really annoying and makes you sound like a rougher rider than you are. It's usually worse with new brakes or new pads. This is because the pad backings are fairly slippery and slide across the piston until they hit the other side of the caliper. Eventually the clunking noises will go away once the piston wears through the paint and gives it something to grip to. You can clearly see where the piston sits with my old pads. But if you can't wait, then we can simulate the worn paint with some thin tape. I've used a few different types with mixed results, but I found surgical tape works pretty well. It's as simple as sticking the tape to the back of the pad and cutting it to match the piston. It's up to you how neat you want it to be, either a small square roughly the size of the piston or the entire backing. Just be aware that adding tape will make it more likely for your brake to rub. Thinner tapes help reduce it, but thicker tape will have a better effect at quietening the brake. Your clunking brake should be quieter now. Eventually the tape will wear through, but by this time the pads should grip the piston and no more tape is needed. So there we go everyone. Those are five things you can do to your bike that will ease setup and make it run a little bit smoother. I hope you find them useful. Let me know down in the comments if you do this yourself. If you have any hints and tips that you've done to your bike that have made life easier and you wanna share them, then please put them down in the comments as well. Also, let me know if you liked this concept of video. Like I said, I've not really done a list video before, but if you do enjoy it, then I will do more in the future. Now, if you've been watching this video, I know you're awesome. If you've got to this point at the end of the video, I know you're extra awesome. If you want to show your support to the channel, then you can do that in a few different ways. Firstly, you can just click the subscribe button, the notification button, post a comment, a thumbs up, I love that kind of support and it really is appreciated. If you want to go a little bit further and actually help me continue to make videos like this, because at the minute with the current climate, there's no shows. My source of income has now come down to purely YouTube, merch sales, Patreon and PayPal donations. So if you want to help out with any of those, I've got them all linked in the video description. It would really help me make more videos, which will hopefully entertain you guys. Anyway, like the intro, this is possibly the shortest outro I've ever done. So have a great week, everyone. I'll catch you next time. See you later.